the Ruko R111 Remote ID Module, something that you may need if you plan on staying compliant with FAA Part 107 requirements. This small device will broadcast your location and much more. And in this video, I'm going to give you the best tutorial step by step so you'll know exactly how to set this up correctly. And you also need to know what setup materials are included so you'll be able to mount this on any drone. Now looking at the module, you see there are two buttons, the power button on the left and also in the middle, you see that there is a settings button. Both are very important in order for you to bind both the remote ID and the application correctly. Now you'll also find some perfectly cut double-sided stick tape where you can mount the remote ID to your drone. But if that creates a sticky situation and you prefer something else, well, there's also Velcro that's included and you'll be able to remove or reposition the module very easily. And keep in mind that this device can be used on several drones, not just one. And you also see for mounting purposes that they included light blue zip ties. And honestly, those colors go very well with my channel theme. And they also included an adjustable zip tie strap. And you can see you can set up and mount this device on just about any drone. And the final two things that came with this remote ID module was one, the USB-C charging cable, and the other was the manual. But you won't need to be turning pages on this one because this video is going to give you the best information just like magic. And if you like that little trick, then go ahead and hit that like button. And I'm moving to step number one, which is downloading the Ruko Scanner app. And as you can see, it's available for both iOS and Android devices. So don't be afraid. You can scan these QR codes right on screen. It'll take you right where you need to go. And for those who are a little conservative, well, you can type in Ruko Scanner, and that will put you right into the application where you'll begin to download it into your iOS or Android device. Now once you open it up, you'll need to touch on allow so that way your app will be able to find your drone via Bluetooth. And if your screen looks exactly like the screen I'm showing you on mine, then it's time to move to step number two. And this is where you'll sync your device so your app can find your remote ID serial number. So the first thing you're going to do is press and hold the power button for three seconds until you see the green lights flashing side by side. And it's important to confirm those flashing lights or the process will fail. And what I recommend is that you look at your application and make sure that there's no other device listed and also hit the refresh button at the very bottom so that no other devices are searchable. Now look at your settings button and you're going to hold that down for three seconds also. And what you will see is that the green light on the right is going to start flashing rapidly. And you should have already noticed that simultaneously the remote ID serial number is appearing on the application. And it's important to understand that this number is what the FAA is looking for when it is time for you to register your drone. And regardless of what anyone else says on any other video, this number cannot be changed. And the reason for that is because I can confirm that this serial number matches the serial number that's on the back of my remote ID module. And they just need to pay attention to these details so that way there's no misunderstanding. Now let's move to step three, which is FAA registration. And what you need to keep in mind is that the binding process of this remote ID module will not be completed until you receive your FAA registration number. And the only way to get that is to provide the FAA with your remote ID ID serial number and also put all the information in regard to your model and serial numbers and then pay the $5 to the FAA so you can receive your FAA registration number for your drone. Now take note, the binding process is not going to be completed until that registration number is inputted back into the application and then you'll go through the process of finalizing the binding. So let's get back to the FAA registration so you'll know how to complete that. Now the top question is asking, does your drone broadcast remote ID information and 90% of you just answered no. Well, hello, you just purchased a remote ID module, didn't you? So the answer to that question is yes. And since you wisely chose the correct answer, well, two selections will appear. Standard remote ID, which is built in, or remote ID broadcast module, which is the one you're holding right now. And now all you have to do at the very bottom is enter the remote ID serial number, verify that it is correct, and hit the save button at the very bottom. Now here you have a chance to review the information before you actually check out. So 
make sure that everything is accurate. And after you pay for the order, you will receive a congratulations message to indicate that your registration was successful. And you'll also receive your certificate of registration with your remote ID and your FAA registration number on it. Now moving into step number four, which is to complete the binding process. You do that by entering the information that the FAA just provided you. And at the very bottom, there's a save button. And when you press that, all the information that you've entered will be transferred into the remote ID module. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll press the save button so you can see that the green light on the very right is now blinking rapidly. And what this means is that the information that you have stored into the application is now being transmitted and stored into the remote ID module. But don't get too excited yet because there's still one more thing you need to do that might be the most important. And that is to power off and restart the remote ID module. By doing this, you'll be able to store the information and the binding process will be complete. Now all you need to do is to turn it on normally as you would any other device. And what you're looking for are two lights that are blinking back to back. Now in a moment, we're gonna see if this thing is actually broadcasting a remote ID, but first, I need to give you information when you're physically setting this thing up and mounting it on your drone that the antenna for the GPS is at the very top, meaning that if you have the word RUCO upside down, it is not correct. You will need to flip it so that way you can see the word RUCO right side up and now you will be in the correct orientation with the GPS antenna being located at the very top. Now we can do a broadcast test to see if this thing actually really works. So I'm setting up a drone scanner application that I previously downloaded and making sure that my Bluetooth is on so I have all of the functionality available. And now that I have a pinpoint location on a map and I see that there are no drones around, I'm going to power on my Ruko remote ID module to see if it starts broadcasting and I should be able to see something on my application. And as you're about to see, the drone scanner app immediately detected my remote ID information. And now I just need to figure out what exactly is the information that's being broadcasted. And remember that this information is available to anyone with a drone scanner application within your vicinity. Now, if I touch on the remote ID serial numbers, you'll see that I have type of signals, Bluetooth, signal strength, aircraft information, serial numbers of the remote ID, and also the FAA registration number being displayed on my screen. Now, if I scroll up even more, you'll find location, altitude, speed, operator ID, operator altitude, and also a category for the airspace of which you are flying in. And as if this wasn't detailed enough, I will have more information on you when I get a chance to test this thing out in the field, but so far, everything looks good. Now, just so you know, I'll have much more videos coming and I am working on an FAA Part 107 2025 study guide with information that I will articulate and explain in detail so you'll be able to pass your Part 107 exam. The video will be coming out soon, so if you want to receive the notification, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell to receive the updates on the video release. Now, I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any questions, we respond quickly to all communications on this channel. Until then, fly safe and stay compliant.